Josh Gordon has been suspended many times during his NFL career, and the latest came yesterday. Out of the blue, Josh Gordon suspended indefinitely for his latest violation, possibly violations, of the substance abuse policy, and this time around, a PED policy violation, which typically is a minimum of four games. The substance abuse policy, we don't know how long it'll last. It has been various times for Josh Gordon that he has been suspended. When he's played, he's played well. In 2013, Chris, his second season in the NFL, in only 14 games, he generated more receiving yardage than Terrell Owens or Randy Moss ever did in any season in their entire career. Yeah. That's how good he could have been. And it's it's sad. It's unfortunate. The NFL shouldn't care about guys smoking marijuana on their own time, especially when they are away from the job site for months. But the NFL does. These are the rules. And if you don't comply, you don't play. And it's just a shame that it's happened to anyone, really. But it's a shame that it's happened to a guy who was so talented. Remember, he came in the same year as Justin Blackman. Right. Blackman washed out early due to similar reasons. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons why the NFL is softening this. The stigma for marijuana obviously has completely changed. It's right. not there like it used to be. And I think the NFL realizes, why why are we being sticklers yeah. on this rule that is keeping great players off the field? We want great players to play football. Right. Yeah, I agreed. And, I mean, you know, we're seeing health benefits from CBD or marijuana and things for helping guys that way. Uh, I, I got to think, though, this is the end of the road for Josh Gordon. You know, and and like to what you're saying, this is one of the freakier athletes ever we've ever seen. Mike, I I, w I saw him in training camp his second year, I think it was in the NFL. I was down in Cleveland. He came out on the field, and I I couldn't believe it. He was one of those guys that makes your jaws drop because you go, oh my gosh, this guy's a receiver. I mean, yeah, six four, muscles popping out everywhere. You know, sh big square shoulders like he's LeBron James, uh, just the perfect specimen. And yeah, it's been a lot of issues, Mike. And you know, the one thing I'll say, and I don't, you know, this is just rumors I hear. I just hope it hasn't gotten more to marijuana. Okay. That's, and, and again, I don't know that for sure, but I know there's rumors around the NFL that it might've sli sli slipped into some, some other things to go along with it. And I just hope that's not true. And I hope he can and, just get and, his and, life and let's, straight. Let's, let's, yes. let's be careful. Cause those are rumors. We don't want to be trafficking. You're right. In. You're I mean, right. there has been this persistent sense that maybe it's other substances yes. under the substance abuse policy, but I look at it this way. Right. I don't care what it is. If it's not a PED, right. The NFL is a seasonal job. And I know that in the off season, there are guys who are working and they have a much more extensive program than they did years ago. But these are temporary, ideally four month a year, five, six month a year workers. The rest of the time they're on their own. Why does the NFL, why has the NFL felt compelled for all these years to police their private lives? If they're not out endangering someone, if they're not driving their vehicle while they're under, under the influence yeah, right. they're in the privacy of their own home, why does the NFL care? And that has always bothered me. Uh, and and this, is a, this is a problem in various other industries as well, off-duty behavior by an employee. Why and when should an employer care about it? And I think the NFL has gone too far, and hopefully at some point that pendulum will swing the other way. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, to me, it, it is. I mean, I mean, you're right. First off, I, I would like to only see people, you know, get reprimanded or go into the drug program if they, like you said, driving under the influence, you know, been caught with illegal substances that way. But – you know, to test guys and do all that, I think it is ridiculous. Gosh, we got way more important jobs in our country uh, where people don't get as strictly tested with some of this stuff, and we trust those people to do jobs on a day-in, day-out basis. But yet football, you know, for some reason, we're going to be really strict with that, and let alone we talk about, you know, the publicizing of alcohol and liquor, which is killing millions of people. Uh, and, you know, there you go. You just get into the instance of weed. It makes people, what, sit on the couch and eat a bag of chips uh, or eat some M&Ms? I mean, that's about as bad as it ever gets from that standpoint. And, and I'm with you. I think it hurts the league and, and it also drives guys to times to go into opioids and that's an issue. And I know I've had, you know, two teammates in my past who have had issues with that because of the drug program. And it's, it's, you know, t taking their life for a bad turn. Josh Gordon had seven catches in five games with the Seahawks just last week. Pete Carroll explained that they needed to do a better job of getting in the ball. He had a spectacular 58 yard reception against the Panthers on Sunday, caught the back of the ball, pulled it in. That may be the last catch we ever see him make in the NFL. And where do the Seahawks go from here, yeah. Chris, at the receiver position? Doug Baldwin retired. Tyler Lockett kind of stepped into that role. 
DK Metcalf has done well, but there was that euphoria when they got Josh Gordon. And he and I guess it's better for the Seahawks that he didn't have like three or four hundred and fifty yard games because then they would really be feeling this. He didn't do enough from a production standpoint that they're going to feel rattled and shell shocked no. by this. But what do they do at receiver without him? Well, I mean, they, you know, DK Metcalf and Lockett are the go-to guys. And Lockett just getting healthy after having that leg bruise or whatever he was dealing with there. So that's plenty to go around. And then, you know, when you talk about, you know, uh, you know, they, they got David Moore still on the roster, you know, 17. I always forget his damn name. Uh, Malik Turner. They got other go-to targets that way. So you're right. It's not going to be like a, a huge, oh, my gosh, we don't have Josh Gordon. That's a staple of our offense. No, DK Metcalf kind of fills the role of what Josh Gordon was uh, as far as specimen, down the field target, big guy you can throw jump balls to, big guys you can throw short passes to and expect him to break a tackle and make yards after the catch that way. So it's not a huge blow to their overall attack of what they want to do on the offensive side of the ball. Hey, and you know what? Remember when the Seahawks claimed Josh Gordon on waivers after the Patriots let him go, and we all kind of thought, boy, the Patriots must most something's up. That's yeah. why they let do him go. Do you think they do? Or, do you think they did? Do you think they knew this was coming? I have a feeling that the behaviors they saw at work may that's, have translated. That's right. what I would think too, right? Yes. Consider this, though. The other report at the time was that the Seahawks were looking at Antonio Brown. And I know teams are staying away from him because of the possibility he would be put on paid leave. But he here's the thing. There's only two games left in the regular season, right? D does somebody sign him and risk paying him for one game that he wouldn't be allowed to play in if they do put him on the commissioner exemplist? Wouldn't it be weird if after all these months and the NFL hasn't done anything with him, you know, maybe a team forces the NFL's hand. Wouldn't the Seah Wouldn't it be great for the Seahawks to say, hey, we're signing Antonio Brown. We're going to force you to put him on the commissioner exempt list. And if you don't, we got Antonio Brown for the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, that, it makes sense. But the risk is Antonio Brown. Who the hell knows what he does when he's on your roster for the playoffs? Good point. We'll yeah. be right back. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.